Hey everybody, Al Puglisi Trains. I have a very special video today. I am at David Hughes's house at David Hughes's Western Maryland Railway. It's an incredible HO scale layout. And I have two guests today. I have Alex Kohler and, I'm sorry, what was the dog's name again? Max. Max and Max. And I'm going to introduce you to David Hughes, Max, and Alex. So sit tight. Here we go. David Hughes, how are you? I'm just fine, Al. How are you? Thank you for coming today. Oh, my God. Now, I was here about four or five years ago, and I'm blown away by how much work you've done. <laughs> well, it keeps me off the streets. Yes. And over here is Alex Kohler. Back here in all between September <laughs> and now. Just falling out of my chair. And the dog, Max. Hey, Max. Max. Hey, Max. How you doing? He's a collie. What a great dog. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's start the tour. Let me hit pause, and we're going to do a quick walkthrough. Okay. All right, folks, I'm going to start with a walkthrough, just a quick walkthrough, and then Dave uh, will come with us and explain the different areas. But this is what you see when you come down the stairs. It's just absolutely beautiful. Double-decker HO layout, Western Maryland, and it's uh, early 70s. I'm on 1965 to 1973, roughly, from... Uh early, excuse me, late spring to summer is my season of the year that I choose to model. Wow, and, and Dave, why don't we talk about this first, this uh, okay, well, display area? Uh, obviously, this uh, structure right here houses a helix. There's a helix inside. That oh, gets there is? From uh, one level to the next level, from the lower deck to the upper deck. Okay. But I chose to cloak the outside of the helix with my library. So I've got all my Western Maryland uh, paraphernalia here, timetables and all my favorite books and track charts and so forth. Wow. And then up at the top here is the uh, closed circuit television system. There are four helixes on the layout and uh, the, there are eight cameras that monitor the movement of trains within those four helixes. Oh my goodness. So this is a helix to go from level one to level two. It's totally disguised. Correct. Yeah. Let me get back from it, folks. And it blends in beautifully as you can see. Well, take us on a walkthrough tour, Dave, and show us... Uh... Okay, well, let's. Well, why don't we start at the West... I model the Western Maryland, as I say, from 1965 to mm -hmm. roughly 1973, okay. from Baltimore to Hagerstown, or Hagerstown to Baltimore. Okay. Uh, so, since we happen to be on this side of the basement, we'll start here <laughs> at the Hagerstown end. Okay. Uh, the staging yard, Hagerstown Staging, is on this lower... The, this is the lowest level of the layout here, right. and obviously there's a staging yard on the east end for Baltimore. Wow. Uh, it's a multi-track staging yard that eventually funnels down into a single track. Okay. That cut much you shoot over here. Uh, this is the eastern end of the western staging yard. Wow. And it's going to go into a helix, which is coming into view right now. Okay. And trains will, excuse me, I'll... All right, let me just get an upper mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, sure. Folks, the, the quality of the fascia boards and the, the, the quality of the scenery is just stellar. Everything is absolutely beautiful. Obviously, we'll be running some trains, but I'm going to take you on a little walkthrough first. And let me come around. You're looking at uh, Highfield, Maryland. Highfield, Maryland? Yeah, which is uh, on the prototype where the East Subdivision and the Hanover Subdivision joined at the western end. Oh, wow. Okay. And now you're coming down single track, or almost to single track now, which will represent uh, the portion of the railroad running west out of Highfield for about 20 miles to Hagerstown mm -hmm. through some rocky cuts. Mm -hmm. These are beautiful trees. How did you make the trees? They're all super trees, and we all know how long it make, takes to make <laughs> that many super trees. Oh, I mean, it beautiful. takes you hours and hours to build them, and it takes you about 20 minutes to plant them all. And who did the beautiful backdrop? My wife, Judy, paints all the backdrops from oh. Baltimore to Hagerstown. This is beautiful. This is my representation of Penmar, Maryland. Okay, so this is this is Penmar. Uh-huh. And then we have... Uh, this is DCC North Coast controlled? Uh, Digitrax. Digitrax, okay. And this, let's just follow this around here. Okay. And you are shooting Railroad West. Okay, wow. Let me do this then. And we're down in a cut now. Okay, let me see if I can come around. Oh yeah, I can see the cut. Absolutely beautiful. And it's, this is hiding a helix, too. Yes. Wow. Oh, how 
helix here. In fact, it is a helix. It is a helix yes. behind here, folks. So, yeah, so there's a helix inside this rounded, but you don't even notice it. If you didn't say anything, I would have never known. So there's a helix in there. Okay, and then where do we go from here? Uh, the helix is going in a counterclockwise direction. Here's the next lower level. Okay. Which I've opened up so you can uh, put some scenery in there at Edgemont. Okay. Oh, it's, man, it's a shame to hide so much trackage in the helix. I like to expose them wherever I can. Right. Yeah, this is very nice through here. Let me see if I can. Oh, yeah. Use LED lighting, I guess, underneath there. Yes, it's recessed into the upper level of the helix. And it's. Let me step away. Beautifully done. Very clean. Thank you. And then where do we go from here? Okay, why don't you pan left. Okay. And we'll look at the uh, lower level over here. Over here, I'll. This is the east subdivision of the Western Maryland Railway. It's on the lower level. And above, which we'll get to in just a minute, is the Dutch Line or Hanover subdivision, which is on the upper level. Okay. Uh, this area right here on the prototype is called High Bridge for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. It's a, a bridge that's about 70 feet above Owens Creek, just a little bit west of Thurmont. And I worked from uh, prototype drawings of this bridge. The bridge is the correct length, the correct track curvature, and super elevation. Man, it's beautiful. And we've got hikers oh, back here. Oh, yeah, we've here. got hikers up on the. And the scenery is, is superb. They look like some other trees, too, that are. There are. Uh, I will tell you that I go to the Timonium train shows, and if I, somebody's got a box of nice-looking trees for 20 bucks, You grab them. I'll grab it. Doesn't matter if they're not super trees. Just as long as they look convincing, I'll buy them. Right, because it represents the multiple different species, yeah, yeah. the species of trees. And you get tired of building super trees after a while, and it's right. nice just to come home with a box of ready-made trees. Yes. These rocks right here, believe it or not, are Woodland Scenics Ready Rocks right out of the shrink wrap box. Good Lord, you didn't touch them. I didn't touch All I did was obviously put foliage in the cracks where I made joints between them, mm -hmm. but they are straight out of the... I don't know how to weather rocks and uh, stain rocks, so wow. they're right out of the box. And you've got your east-west directions here. you got a nice field here for uh, farmland here. Just just uh, a lot of open space, not overcrowded. Yeah. Look at the orchard here. Wow. This orchard is really well done, too. Well, thank you, Al. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Judy painted the orchard on the backdrop so that the 3D trees blend into the painted backdrop. Oh, yeah. Let me go over to that. Yeah, there it is right there. Wow. And then we go over to Helix Operation. Explain kind of the Helix Operation. If you... I can't explain it. I built it, but I can't explain it, Al. <laughs> it's really uh, impressive. Let me pan back. Be between the Western Maryland signage and the carpet and the cleanliness of it all, and then if you zoom back in, on this is the lower level, and this takes you toward what, Baltimore? We're going, yes, you're going towards Baltimore. You're at Monocacy now. Mm -hmm. which is out in Carroll County, the muddy Monocacy River. Wow. That is beautiful. Look at that. That's a micro-engineering bridge, or Central Valley. I think it's a Central Valley bridge kit. And your wife painted the backdrop back yes. there, too, mm -hmm. and really did a nice job blending the, the murky water. Thank you. All the way back. And from there, the track obviously disappears into a forest canyon. Mm-hmm and is going to step on another helix and drop a level to okay. your left and over here to lower. All right, before I do that, yes, let me just, I'll go okay. up above. Now you're on the Hanover subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at the little town of Porters, Pennsylvania, which is on the Hanover subdivision of the Western Maryland. Wow. Yeah, this is a zinky little spot on the map. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting is you have the labeling that's very nice there, Porters. And this is a real town. Yes. All the locations on the railroad are real town. In fact, the shot that you have right now, mm -hmm. I stood in the middle of Porter's Road, which is the street in the foreground, mm -hmm. and took the photograph of those buildings that are painted on the backdrop and Judy replicated them. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is beautiful. There is a full uh, signaling system on the layout, which is operational. 
What kind of signaling is it? Is it? They are Oregon Rail Signals kits, mm -hmm. uh, and I designed much of the circuitry to make them work. Wow, and we've got the cows. Oh, we gotta get, gotta have cows. And we're gonna have trains running soon too, folks. But uh, I, you need to see what a beautiful little scene here. And the, now, how long have you been working on this layout, David? Says the Golden Spike was uh, 2018. Yes, I started building the layout in. 1999 okay and it's now july the 7th of 2024 so i've been at it for 25 years and at this at this one location yes this is the first layout i've ever built wow and the size of it is roughly ah uh, i'd have to go back to the model railroader article to remember my own basement i think it's something like 26 by 30. wow yeah it's in you're in hanover pennsylvania now those are the three SD35s that operate the stone train. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And the Go right train back order there. signals there. And then down further, it disappears. That, yeah, that, you, that trackage off to your right goes into a helix, which eventually gets you down to the lower level at Highfield, which right. we were which is at right, a few minutes ago. Right there. Well, let me pause it and go over to the other side. All right, so this is the upper level at Porters. Yes, we're still on the Hanover subdivision moving uh, railroad east. Okay. We're going to cross Cadoras Creek. Wow. And come past Hamill Farm. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's named Hamill Farm is one of my best model railroading buddies in the whole wide world, Vince Hamill, hmm. built the farmhouse that's going to come into view in a moment. He is he is an immaculate scratch builder of HO structures. Oh, yeah. And the farmhouse you're going to see was a throwaway to him. He said, you want this? I said, yes, I'll take that. Thank That's you beautiful. very much, <laughs> Yeah, this is gorgeous. And Wow. This represents the uh, Western Maryland trackage, which runs more or less parallel to Maryland Route 30 between Reisterstown and the uh, Pennsylvania line. Just single track, rather mundane trackage, passing all kinds of farmhouses and small residences. And uh, we're moving eastward. We are moving towards the east, correct. Yeah. We've got a cornfield here. Now, yep. how did you do this cornfield? That's the corn, uh, the corn stalk uh, product from, uh, I can't remember. Fowler, or was it? Yeah, maybe Fowler. It right. may be Fowler. One of the German yes. companies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Your wife really did a great job blending the, yeah, she's... the backdrop. Now we're as far east as uh, Woodensburg, Maryland, which is just north of Reisterstown or Glendon, Maryland, okay. where the suburban propane uh, facility is. They have a siding there. And, and this is uh, Woodensburg. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, mid-early 70s. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then let's go down. Should we go lower level now? Or? Uh, sure. Now I'm going to drop down here. Now we're back to the east subdivision. We're in the town of Westminster, Maryland. And this big facility here, is that still in Westminster? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. What is this? <laughs> Hit the edit button. All right. <laughs> I forget. No, that's it's okay. It's uh, uh, the publishing company. I can't think oh, of the wow. name of it. That's uh, okay. It's really cool. Uh, what is it? Well, it'll come to us. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> And it's right Everybody up. knows what it is, and I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, that's all right. At the west end of Westminster. So now your camera is panning towards the west in Westminster. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of this is uh, fictitious buildings and, and uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. You're coming up on uh, Maryland Route 140, which is a wow. six-lane highway that crosses the Western Maryland and Westminster. Oh, yeah. Western Maryland Railway Company there. Yeah. Beautiful. And now you're coming into downtown Westminster where Main Street crosses the railroad. All right, let me pause it, folks, and get a little better angle here. Yeah, there's a, Alex, look, there's a car show here, man. Yeah. This is just, uh, and this is uh, downtown Westminster. Yeah, my representation of it in minimal space, yes. Right, wow. Okay. Let me get up. Many years ago, the friend. So Johansson's Restaurant. It's a real restaurant right there in, um, what's it, is that Main Street in Westminster there, Dave? Yep. It's still there? Oh, yeah, yeah the train goes, the, the middle middle goes right right through it. Oh, wow. It's a really, really cool spot. 
And then where should we go? Should we keep uh, going around? Yeah, or? keep coming around. We'll go All right, head that let's way go head this way with yep. Dave. I want okay. you folks to see this. All right, Dave. On the on. prototype, uh, there is a th twisting, winding, three-mile grade uh, east of Westminster that climbs up into Emery Grove. Mm -hmm. uh, and that grade starts right here at this signal, the block signal. Mm -hmm. And the track is going to climb, and we'll see where that goes in just a minute. But we're looking railroad east towards Baltimore here. Okay. okay. Why don't you come around here? All right. Wow. Lord, look at this. Mm -hmm. Man, a lot. Oh, there you are, Dave. Here I am. <laughs> okay. Now, on the prototype, there was no tunnel portal, but I had to use modeler's license to create that track coming from nowhere to the location, <clears throat> excuse me, of Falls. Mm -hmm. And this is a heavy grade. We're climbing eastbound up Falls Hill up into Emory Grove eventually and you can go around to your right there Alex mm -hmm. and the grade wow. just keeps climbing and climbing up to the second level yes wow that's got to be steep and this is Maryland Route 30 uh, north out of Reisterstown and what we're looking at is the Reisterstown Lumber Company now where's that that's oh that's over here yeah, it's just yeah. there it is. okay and there was a uh, siding, still is a siding, at Reisterstown Lumber Company, which I have depicted. Yeah. And uh, from there, the track goes through a pretty deep cut, still yeah. climbing. Wow, you can see it climbing. It looks like, what, about a 3 or 4% uh, grade? It's about 2.5%. Okay. Yeah. And in the distance will be Emory Grove, which is farther around here to the left. All right, let's walk back. Wow, let me. You're at the west end of Emory Grove, mm -hmm. where the east subdivision is coming from Westminster, mm -hmm. and the Hanover subdivision here in the foreground is going west towards uh, Hampstead, Maryland, Hanover, Pennsylvania, Gettysburg, and so forth. Wow. And that's the confluence of those two lines at Emory Grove. Look at this, this, your water effects, do you use Envirotex or what, what do you I use? I use magic water. You use magic water? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you use the magic water for the ripples too? or the, the ripples are woodland scenics water effects that get painted on the top once the body of the water dries. And then I highlight them with uh, white paint to create the ripples and the motion. Does the uh, magic water have an odor to it or no? Not at all. Wow. No. no. Now with Envirotex, I know if there's the slightest pinhole, it'll find a leak. Does is same is with magic same? water? Okay, yes. same with magic water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have to mix magic water? Yes, or? you do. Okay. And it, if it tells you it takes 24 hours to dry, it takes more like four days to dry. Okay. But it does eventually set up. Oh geez. Now I like these controls. This is thank uh, you. These are the uh, Rick's kits, CTC style. Uh, control levers and little panels mm -hmm. uh, that look like a union switch and signal switch machine that I have chosen to use to operate switches and signals, powered switches and signals on the layout at various locations. Wow. And then through here... This is Emory Grove. You're looking railroad east. We're in the town of Glendon now. That's uh, Butler Road. I scratch built that bridge which is a replica of the Butler Road bridge that crosses over the railroad. Man. And I'll let well, you get let me past get here. through here. In the distance is the Glendon Station. Right, that's the one we drove the by. Post office. Yes. Hey, we, we drove by that, Alex. Mm -hmm. Coming in here. Mm -hmm. The railroad, the radius of the two tracks is pretty tight back in there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to camouflage it with the town mm -hmm. and a bunch of trees just so you're not quite aware of the fact that it's really a tight turn back in there. Right, yeah, you really don't notice it. If you didn't say anything, I wouldn't have noticed it. And it's got the staging yard. And that is the control, that's the uh, western end control panel of the east staging yard, which is down at hip level, which is the Baltimore staging. Wow. Trains get staged. I should tell you that uh, there's a big staging yard at the east end of the layout, and you've mm -hmm. already seen the one at the west end of the layout. The layout is also uh, has a continuous run feature for open houses. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, that's a great thing. It can man. run all around, all around the basement. Wow. On the uh, lower level, 
uh, which is longer, uh, excuse me, the lower level is shorter. It takes about 14 minutes for a train to go around the basement. On the upper level, it takes about 17 minutes at oh, prototype that's, speed. That's fantastic. Now, we're running here to where? You, you are running at, at we're at a location called St. George's on the Railroad, mm -hmm. which was just east of Emory Grove. And uh, to the left of your screen, we are still running east into Baltimore. We're in suburban Baltimore County now. Okay. We're uh, about 18 or 17 miles outside of downtown Baltimore, running towards Baltimore. Okay. Morning side height Morning apartments. Side height apartment buildings, yes. That's a real apartment building. Oh, yeah. You're at Benita Avenue grade crossing with the pair of block signals there. Now you're coming up to Reisterstown Road where the railroad passes over Reisterstown Road and Owings Mills. Wow. Really good backdrop extension. Looks Thank great. You. And the color cross. Well, I like the way the fascia kind of goes into the building. That is uh, my representation of the massive Maryland Cup Corporation in Owings Mills, which existed during my rail fanning days as a teenager. Oh, wow. We've got to have that. And this coming through here. Now you're crossing the Beltway. The railroad goes over top the Beltway on the west side. And now you are to Sudbrook. And that's a scratch build of the Sudbrook Lane overpass that is no longer there. That bridge got replaced a number of years ago, but I went and photographed it and measured it. Wow. And we've got a camouflage mirror that I'm going to show you folks. Uh, it's right there. And you'd never know it. The, it's really cool the way you did that. Thank you. And it goes into the bathroom. Where Max is. Yeah, where Max is. Max, you got to wake up. Max. <laughs> Max is asleep. We won't bother Max. This is really cool. Uh, it goes right in here and comes out here. It's, this is beautifully done. Wow. And you have Western Maryland towels. And this is fabulous. Yeah, yeah this, this is what a bathroom should be, ladies men anybody really this bathroom is dreams. this is a bathroom of uh bathroom of dreams bathroom of dreams here i love this this is brilliant and this goes right back out and that building hides the wall and max is still sleeping so we come out right here yes now we're we're all the way into baltimore city now the gritty west side of baltimore there are some industries here that can be switched. Mm -hmm. And the track comes through the wall from the bathroom. Right. And we are now at Wallbrook Junction. The train that you see in the picture now uh -huh. is on the east subdivision. It's going to run down to Fulton Junction. Okay. And in the background, you'll see another track disappearing. That is the Tide subdivision, which ran down to Port Covington in Baltimore. Oh, wow. And the city scene that you're coming to now is about 85% complete. I'm just, I am just built all these structures, uh, and I'm getting them placed, and the scenery dropped in. Wow. This is impressive. Let me pause this. Well, folks, we're going to be running a train very shortly, and that was our walkthrough. And let me give you a few more shots here while we're getting the trains ready to run. And uh, of this upper level on the helix and this beautiful lower level on the helix and then an overview of just how clean everything looks down here and I hear a train starting so let's uh, let's film her well Dave you could be in the picture now you put down this bridge uh, there are two swing bridges on the layout that connect track work at the foot of the stairway to the rest of the layout. Oh, wow. And, and these swing in and out of position. And what are these? Are these mostly intermountain or are these... Uh... I have, like most of us, I guess, I have quite a mixture of uh, motive power. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm never good at remembering this stuff. They are intermountain, uh, Cato, mm -hmm. Stewart, Bachman. Right. Uh, all kinds else? of goodies. Yeah, all kinds of goodies. Yeah. Wow. Now, where's this train going to pop out, this oh, one? That, that's the mystery. I can't even remember myself. It's all right. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to it's gonna come out at Falls, and we're going to climb Falls Hill and come up into Emory Grove. Wow. We're operating on a continuous run loop at the moment. All right. Let me pause this so I can get on the other side of the bridge. All right. 
wanted to get this little scene before going sure. through the bridge. The folks, the bridge is a swing out bridge. Mm -hmm. It gets right out of the way. And the train right now is in a hidden helix that we have a little access hole that you can see so that it can get up. Where will it come out on the upper level? It's actually level? going down. Oh, it's going down. It's okay. going down to Baltimore staging, and then we're going to continue on a continuous run loop and travel much of the trackage we just talked about. All righty. Get the Midnight Cafe. Let's go chase the trains. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some staging down lower where the trains are. You don't see them because they're in staging, and they will come back up on the layout shortly. I just wanted to shoot an overview of this little hallway section. It's just really neat, David. No, it's really cool. And any second I hear it, it's going to come out of this this upper end of the helix. It's going to yep. blast out of the tunnel. It's going to blast out of the tunnel. <laughs> yep. Here she comes, Western Maryland greatness. Mm -hmm. Now we can run some, watch the trains. It's a nice concept here, locomotives. We're going up the grade. Yeah, coming up and getting the grade. Come out over on that side and yeah. we'll right. over there. I'll run over there. Yeah. Just get a little shot of the rolling stock. Come over here and get the signal locked. All and right. Fly over to Emerald Grove as a crow flies. Boy. See the signal. Yeah. Yep. Signal green. Wow. Diesel greatness. This looks real. If I could step back to 1972, I think I'd buy a Super Duty Trans Am and Buccaneer Green like in a McHugh, <laughs> John, John Wayne McHugh, Buccaneer Green with a camel interior and a 455. Good old days. Wow. What a scene there. Oh boy. Another train, folks, that uh, is sitting and waiting for clearance. And when it does, we're going to bring it over the bridge so you can see it. And we got to sit tight for a little while till we get the orders to move. <laughs> Here she comes. Do a little rail fan in at the bridge here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank <laughs> you. 
absolutely beautiful through this bridge. What kind of sound units are these mostly? Uh, mostly tsunami twos. Like well, that. we're moving some trains around, folks, so we can run on the other half of the layout. I just wanted to show you some of the uh, closed uh, camera footage inside one of the helixes, Dave. It's behind the scenes. Behind and the scenes uh, it's good that you can see that uh, nothing's derailing, which is good. And that if you have any issue in tunnels, you can also see that here's some other live movement. And all of this is on this beautiful kiosk that Dave built. And we're going to run through the other half shortly. Well, folks, I just wanted to get some additional shots for you. Looking down lower, this is under the Western Maryland Bridge. This beautiful scene mm -hmm. here that we looked at earlier and you have a fly fisherman Gorgeous. yeah this is just absolutely beautiful scenery and this is the hikers we looked at earlier here we go folks some more rail fanning these are f7s yes they are in the mountain oh yes I need to get the red right horns on them and the cooling piping on the top, but beyond that, they're very nice looking at it. Yes. Absolutely beautiful watching these F7s cutting through this beautiful scenery, David. Thank you, Al. Man. Railroad greatness, Alex. Well, I know. I was, I was here back in September. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Man.
Wow. Folks, before we end this video with uh, David Hughes. Now, David, what scene is this up here I'm looking this at again? This is Hanover, Pennsylvania, on the Hanover subdivision or Dutch line uh -huh. of the Western Maryland. Okay. Um, there was an engine house there, uh, and this is where the three SD-35s lived, effectively, that ran the stone train in and out of Baltimore six days a week from the quarry at Binninger, Pennsylvania, which was just west of Hanover, Pennsylvania, into Sparrows Point. Oh, to the wow. Bethlehem steel plant six days a week. Because I remember at the beginning of the video, I think you said it made reference to the coal, the the, uh, the stone train. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what right. this is. Mm -hmm. So, I, David, I really appreciate you showing uh, Alex and I this layout. Now, what else have you got, you got planned for it? You're redoing another okay, one. Let's sure. see. Well, come pan a little bit right here. All right, forgive our Cokes that this are sitting here. This is going to be the Coca-Cola factory in Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to be a very <clears throat> urban scene uh -huh. behind the track. This, obviously, you see where the track is going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, all across the back here is going to be warehouse type buildings that are going to butt up to the railroad right away here. Mm -hmm. And from this point to this point is going to be uh, row houses, Baltimore, typical Baltimore row houses. Okay. I want it to look like, the, as it does in the real world, the railroad, uh, the railroad ran through the west side of Baltimore through uh, industrialized areas and residential areas. Right. And I want to give that feel that the, the railroad is just making its way through the west side of Baltimore. Wow. Well, this railroad is absolutely beautiful, and we had a great time, and thanks so much for hosting us. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming, Al. I've been looking forward to your visit.